Mr. Gill, we had a very interesting announcement, uh, some provisional news about Pirelli World Challenge's 2017 season. Provisional maybe being the operative word. Some great stuff in terms of calendar dates and where some things might be going there. Can you tell us what you know is confirmed and when you might be able to firm up the rest of the calendar? So we let out with an 11 weekend schedule next year. We have two dates that we haven't confirmed yet. One, one could suspect that since we race with IndyCar and we've talked about having five races with IndyCar and we've seen to be in September, you might be able to figure out where that September date is. The other date is, uh, and we can be clear about it, uh, we've had a great partnership with the Utah Motorsports Campus. However, they are still in transition on what's going to happen with their ownership. So with our August date, that is the area we're looking at. However, we've also looked at a couple other locations. So that'll be the one where the real story will be is what, what happens in our August date for next year. A couple other big ticket items in that provisional release. One of them, I guess you could term it a further alignment with the SRO in terms of BOP uh, with the GT3 spec cars. Tell me a little bit about the evolution of that relationship and how it uh, plans to grow for 2017. It'll be a continuation of what we announced last fall. We adopted the BOP. Anytime you adopt something, you say, this is what you're going to do, you still, I guess from the word adoption, now I'm going to learn what I've got, what are we doing? I couldn't be more pleased with the SRO BOP and the communication between our director of competition, Marcus Hazelgrove, and Claude Simone, who is not only the architect, but the current person who puts together all of the SRO BOP. Marcus and Claude, I've heard from their staff, nobody talks more than the two of them. Uh, so it's a good partnership, very good. Now there are some issues though, and one of the challenges for them is how do they balance cars that are not racing in Europe? Both Cadillac, which is FIA homologated, and the Acura TLX, which is not. And that's been a challenge for the SRO. Certainly it helps that we have a great deal of data here, but I can understand the challenge for the SRO in looking at it. You know, even in the case of Bentley, which is one of the smaller cars in terms of total number of units sold, they still have something like 13 or 14 cars around the globe that they can reference for BOP. So that's a challenge the SROs had to work on this year, and we feel that they've been very fair, very transparent in, w in what they've done, but it's still been a challenge. I think while the, the schedule bits and the SRO bits, uh, at least for what I've heard, have been received positively, the one that's had the most amount of questions and maybe hopes that uh, it is truly provisional is the plan to split almost half the weekends in GT into the Sprint X type thing, two drivers required. If all that happens, it'd be a pretty big departure from World Challenge as the Sprint racing series. Tell me a little bit about that decision. Is it a sure thing? What's going on there? So great question. And you're right. I think we saw provisionally, we started discussing this in April with some of our stakeholders uh, at Long Beach Grand Prix. It was well received, but I think what we realized after the fact, certainly as we saw reaction in the paddock this weekend at, at uh, Mid-Ohio, was that, oh, I thought I was still going to have 10 sprint races and I could add on five of these sprint X races. I, I didn't see that. And, you know, so there's what we, we, we communicated to all the teams yesterday that here's the, here's the calendar, operative word, as you said, provisional. Now, the other a aspect was we wanted to see two more sub championships developed and for the Sprint X, also looking at the fact that we're going to allow Sprint X and GT4, so it'd be combined. So we'd have two more championship opportunities. Some people could be Sprint, some people could be Sprint X, and as we've seen in Europe and with the SRO, an overall series champion. However, and you and I've had this conversation before, Marshall, we're customer focused in this country and in this business. We'll respond to what is in our customers' best interests, and we're starting the dialogue on that now. Our goal is to have an official, as hard as you can say, September date with at the Sonoma event and being able to present back to our GT and GTS teams, this is our plan for 2017. So we're way early on the scheduling. We're happy to announce that, but we definitely see in the case of Sprint and Sprint X, more work has to be done before we have everyone adopting it in the paddock and liking it. That means, to be clear about that, how many races are there going to be? What are going to be the qualifications? We've laid out a lot of the drivers and things that we look at, but we're going to get more feedback from both the manufacturers and the teams before anything's finalized. You're going to be busy between now and September speaking with the paddock, speaking with the manufacturers. How does that process work? Is it lots of, of shouting and yelling? Is it calm? What's that like? Because ultimately, as you said, this is a customer-driven paddock. You know, that's a great question again, and I think the key thing on our process on that 
We have another customer satisfaction survey that we're working on now. So there'll be a general one which will allow people anonymity if they want to say, I really don't like certain things. But we've had a really candid paddock and we've started something where we've done some sit down dinners with some of the team owners as a group, invited everybody in. So we'll use that type of process at Utah, probably another informal sit down, no agenda, check your guns at the door, just tell me what's on your heart and mind. Let's work with it. Marcus and I will sit in those with, and so we can look at it from both a business standpoint and a competition product. And on the same token, again, it's also something that we are driven by not only our customer base racing, but by our manufacturer's interest too. So we'll have separate meetings with them, and then we'll put them together into an open format. So everyone can say, I was consulted, I was spoken to. Uh, I think particularly in GTS, we saw people saying, well, I know you said you heard that, but I've talked to these five people who feel different. Can I put it up to a vote? Well, we're not quite that democratic. We think we're going to lead and move forward with it, but every person's input is valuable. And it won't just be with GT and GTS, although that relates to Sprint and Sprint X. We're also doing a lot with our touring class. And we'll have a, a summit meeting with them in Utah, where they'll be there. We started one at CTMP and, and looking for their input. How many races do they want next year? Where would they like to be? With IndyCar, without IndyCar, things like that. So that's what we'll be working on, and that is the process. So the last question on that, that theme to close, we have in America, we have some great endurance racing, multiple drivers, etc. This World Challenge product for 20 plus years has been the go-to place for sprint racing. Uh, you're not giving that up. Absolutely not. We are not an endurance racing series.